South Asia faces a hot, humid, and deadly future. Climate change will make parts of South Asia too hot to live in by the end of the century, threatening the lives of millions of the world's poorest people. In 2015, more than 3,500 people were killed in heat waves in the region, but things are apparently going to get much, much worse. The authors of a new study say densely populated agricultural regions in South Asia will experience increases in heat and humidity that will make them uninhabitable by the year 2100. The scientists say if climate change continues on its current trajectory, heat waves will cause the wet bulb temperature to rise to deadly levels in parts of India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. Wet bulb temperature is calculated by combining temperature, humidity, wind speed, sun angle, and cloud cover to measure heat stress in direct sunlight. According to the study, by the year 2100, 75% of South Asia's population would experience wet bulb temperatures higher than 31 degrees Celsius, which is dangerous for humans. In this scenario, 4% of the population would also experience deadly wet bulb temperatures exceeding 35 degrees. South Asia is home to one-fifth of the world's population and has high levels of poverty. Scientists say the poor will feel the brunt of rising temperatures because they lack access to air conditioning and other methods to beat the heat. They say cutting greenhouse gas emissions would help lower the impact of climate change on the poor. Don't let YouTube ad bots dictate what Tomo News reports. Support us at patreon.com slash Tomo News. We can't say we weren't warned. Cooling the planet at a cost. As temperatures on Earth reach unprecedented highs, extreme, potentially disastrous weather will become more likely. Scientists say there may be ways to intervene, but warn they come with risky consequences. Researchers are investigating strategies for geoengineering, one of which is mimicking the effects of a volcanic eruption. Erupting volcanoes spew out large amounts of sulfur-rich gases, which help cool the Earth by reflecting solar radiation back into space. The same effect could be recreated using planes that would inject sulfur into the atmosphere. But to cool the planet by one degree Celsius, 6,700 injections are needed eventually, which would cost 20 billion US dollars annually. This approach also risks destroying the ozone layer and reducing rainfall, enough to potentially cause droughts in certain regions. A similarly drastic approach to cooling the Earth can be achieved by thinning heat-trapping cirrus clouds. Seeding causes the clouds to break apart and lets more heat escape. The seeding process, however, must be precise, otherwise new cirrus clouds may form elsewhere and add to warming. But while sulfur injections and cirrus cloud seedings will cool the land, carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere remain the same, and ocean acidification continues. As such, researchers argue the two strategies should be deployed more as a last resort, adding that reducing carbon emissions are much more effective at curing climate change. A carbon dioxide sucking plant just opened in Zurich. The alarming rise in atmospheric carbon dioxide has led scientists to develop removal technologies to counter climate change. One such company in Switzerland has built a plant that directly removes this carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The Climeworks plant is located on top of a waste recovery facility, which provides it with heat and electricity. Air containing carbon dioxide and other molecules are blown through several carbon dioxide collectors. The plant currently has 18 such collectors, which are large boxes fitted with filters that capture more than 2,400 kilograms of carbon dioxide each day. Carbon dioxide binds to the amines in the filter, while other molecules pass through and return to the atmosphere. Once saturated, the filter is heated to 100 degrees Celsius, causing the carbon dioxide to unbind and be extracted. The filtration system can be reused several thousand times, allowing this process of removal and collection to be a continuous cycle. The carbon dioxide collected by the plant can be stored underground, used to help make renewable fuels and materials, or supplied to the food and beverage industry. Climeworks provides 900 tons of carbon dioxide annually to a nearby greenhouse, which has reportedly increased their crop yield by 20%. Climeworks also hopes to remove 1% of global carbon dioxide emissions by 2025. Eating beans over meat could save the planet. A new study shows Americans should probably eat more beans than meat if the country wants to meet its emissions target. Cows emit methane due to a digestive process known as enteric fermentation. 
Most of the methane is released through belching, and only a small percentage is produced through flatulence. The massive amount of greenhouse gas produced by cows is comparable to the pollution produced by cars. Growing pulses is greatly beneficial to the environment as they are able to directly draw nitrogen from the atmosphere and convert it into nutrients. This means a reduction in the amount of fossil fuels used to produce nitrogen to create these nutrients. It is also much more water efficient to grow pulses than to raise cattle. Beans also provide similar nutrients to the human body as beef, without the increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes, stroke, and colorectal cancer. Research shows changing the population's diet from beef to beans could help the U.S. meet its emissions target by 2020. Another study published in April recommended substituting meat with crickets and mealworms in order to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Would you give up your juicy steaks for beans and worms? Hey, Tomo Sapiens! Help us beat the ad bots by joining our Patreon news squad at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Carbon turned to stone in climate change breakthrough. Researchers in Iceland are hailing a potential game changer for climate change after successfully converting carbon to rock. The project could help to reduce global warming by burying the waste CO2 produced by burning fossil fuels. Scientists at the Hultishedi Geothermal Power Plant in Iceland have converted carbon dioxide into the volcanic rock basalt. Researchers pumped 230 tonnes of CO2 into rock 500 metres underground, dissolving the gas in water to prevent it from escaping. More than 95% of the gas turned to stone within two years, speeding up a natural process that takes hundreds or thousands of years. A potential problem for the technique is that it requires 25 tonnes of water for every tonne of buried CO2. However, researchers say seawater can be used, which is abundant at coastal sites. The project is seen as an improvement on existing carbon capture and storage methods that store CO2 as a gas, causing concern about potential leaks. Large-scale tidal energy farm to be installed in Scotland the world's first large-scale tidal energy farm will soon be installed in Scotland. The 1.5 megawatt turbines stand at 16 metres tall and each have three 8 metre long blades. Four will be installed off the northern coast of Scotland between Caithness and Orkney. The turbines have a 360 degree yaw capacity, meaning they can rotate and operate as the wind changes direction. Developer Atlantis Resources hopes to install 269 turbines in the area, a move that could provide energy for 175,000 homes. According to the Scottish Government, the country holds one quarter of Europe's offshore wind resources.